Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 25. In this episode, we'll be working with a production database via SSH or a Capistrano command. A shout out to Kurt Coder from YouTube for suggesting this topic. In this episode, we'll be going over how to access your production database via SSH. We'll play with a few common SQL commands. And then I'll show you a Capistrano command to run Rails console accessing your production server. It's a very useful shortcut. If you'd like to code along, you just need a Rails app created. And of course, that app deployed to a VPS. This is not something that will work with things like Heroku. These tasks will work for apps that are deployed on something like DigitalOcean. So I'll reference the episodes about DigitalOcean, the first two, Ruby Snack number 12 and Ruby Snack 13, where we set up Postgres on that production server. I will be using Postgres as the database. It would be easy enough to look up MySQL commands for these as well. First up, you need to back up your database first. Before you try to go in and change anything, back it up. All right, a little confession. I did not do this, and I was playing around with my Ruby Thursday site that's up live, and I accidentally deleted all of the episodes. That's right, all 29 episodes went poof because I accidentally hit enter before I was ready. Luckily, I had been well organized with all of my assets for Ruby Thursday, so it only took me about an hour and a half to copy paste and re-upload. But please, please learn from my mistake and back up your database first. So to do that, we first SSH into our production server, and then we run a command for Postgres, which is PG dump. It makes a copy of your database. You'll use this command that I found from Stack Overflow and then enter the username and the database name for your database. I've already SSH'd into my server just to show you how to PG dump. And then if you LS, you see that file has been created. You can then copy it to another computer just for safety. Now let's access our production database. For Postgres, you would type PSQL, the name of the database, dash a capital U for user, and then your user in quotation marks. Now you probably have entered a password, so you would then enter the password with the prompt. SSHing back into the server, then I'll copy paste the PSQL command and enter my password. Now let's play with some common SQL commands. Something I use all the time would be select. So you can select star from table name and that'll give you every record for that table. Then you can use where to select just one. So for example, you can select star from episodes where ID equals two. Also just to note, if you are going to use a string, for example, you're gonna select the episode where the title is Ruby snack number one, you need to use single quotes in the PSQL command line. I'm partial to double quotes, but for this, you need single quotes. And to end your command, you need a semicolon. So the query isn't finished until you add that semicolon. And just a tip, you can press Q to escape any query. Back in our terminal, let's copy paste that command and see that it gives you a list of the attributes first and a list of the records. Now let's look at just one record. So let's paste in just one where we're looking at ID number two. And you can see again, the list of attributes. It's a little hard to find, but you can see. And then these spaces are also because I have a text field. Text fields add a lot. So you can scroll on down and there's the end. So now you hit Q to exit out of it. Another command I use quite often is update when you need to change a certain attribute for a record. So we'll update the table name. You set whatever column and then equals the value. And you can put a couple of columns if you need to do more than one. And then where some column equals some value to say that very specific record that you're trying to change. Now here again is the delete. If you do need to delete something from your table, you probably are going to use it with the where statement because you're just going to delete one record, not the entire table. You may need to delete the whole table if you're working on a staging site and you just want to clean out some data and be quick and dirty about it. If you want to do that, you'd put delete from table name and then the semicolon, which got me in trouble. So be sure you really want to do that. Here are some examples you can look at. 
And then to exit PSQL, you want to do backslash Q. I'm just going to demonstrate update, so I'll copy in this command, and you see that it just gives you feedback. Yes, I updated one. Not going to show you delete for obvious reasons. Next up, I'll demonstrate another way that you can access your production database, especially if you are not very familiar with SQL commands, but you are familiar with the Rails console. If you are using Capistrano, you can use this command. You need to describe the command in your deploy.rb. So we'll put it in namespace Rails, describe that it's a remote console and it's task console. And what this says is that it will SSH into the server for you and run a console for production or whatever environment you're using in order to run the Rails console. Opening up our text editor, let's go into our deploy.rb. It's not in namespace deploy. It's a new namespace, so we'll put it underneath there and save that. Now we need to run this simple command, cap production rails colon console in our terminal not ssh into our production server just from our app we'll type in cap production rails console and you see now we have a rails console with irb let's do a simple command of just episode equals episode dot first and you'll see that it gives us all the information we need about the first episode and to update, you can simply write episode dot update attribute. And that takes two parameters, the attribute, which is colon title comma, and then you can change it to whatever you like and then close that parentheses. I'm not going to do that though. I just spent all that work making it right. So I'm just going to exit and now I'm out. Here are some additional resources. I found the W3 schools SQL quick reference, a really great place to see all of the different SQL commands that you can do. And then here is the blog post where I found that rails console command with Capistrano. So you can read more about what he says about that. Again, that one actually came from a tip from Kurt Coder on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Ruby snack. If you are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, click on that big red button right there. It takes you on over and you can subscribe. I am almost to 400 subscribers, so well on my way to 500. So help me out and subscribe. If you are not already on my mailing list, head over to rubythursday.com to sign up to get more Ruby Thursday awesomeness in your inbox. I often tell little cute stories as well in my emails. If you have any questions or other ways that you access your production database, please leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching and see you soon.